nine for 40 um, in the second half. Did you just use your calculator to that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I could tell. I had to. Um, what, what, what were you most pleased with uh, about that comeback? The defense. Yeah. You know, um, I felt for three quarters, we played at an extremely high level. Uh, that second quarter, obviously, was the, uh, uh, the quarter we all like to forget. But in that second half, to your point, not only did we hold them to 40 points, but only 35% from the field and 33 from three. Um, the turnovers were an issue, obviously, but, uh, and then the fourth quarter defense, you know, I told our guys in the huddle, you know, our goal is to keep them under 20 points in the fourth quarter. That's where your defense has to be at its best. And we held them to 16 points. So, you know, to come in here to open the season uh, against a very good basketball team, tough place to play. Uh, really, really proud of our guys. You know, we responded after the half, after a very disappointing second quarter. And uh, that's what you like to see. Did you light into them at halftime? No, no, that's game one, man. Okay. There's, no, there's no reason to. I thought our starters got us off to a great start. Yeah. Uh, obviously, went to the bench, and that bench unit, you know, was okay. And when the starters came back in, they weren't great. So, uh, no, I didn't lay into them. I mean, this is a long season. Um, I, we just talked about the things that we have to get back to doing and understand why we had the lead in the first quarter. We defended the three. They were only two for ten. We had, They had zero points off our turnovers. Um, and then all of a sudden, that second quarter, they scored 38 points. They hit five threes, 12 points off our turnover. So uh, that's just making them understand why why we won, why we lost, and let's just be more consistent. They can really get going, the Suns, with the dribble drive, the three-pointers, the ball movement. And you really slowed that down a little bit in the second half. What's the key to kind of doing that and kind of getting them off their rhythm? Well, it's definitely, definitely a challenge. You know I mean? Uh, that backcourt over there is tremendous. <laughs> with Chris Paul and Devin Booker. Um, and that's where your defense starts. It starts on the ball. And if you're just constantly getting beat or blown by, then you're in your rotations and that opens up the three point line. So um, it's just, you know, putting the onus on the on ball defender and then picking and rolls, making sure we're communicating and being at the level we're supposed to be. And when we're up and aggressive, we have to pull in. When we're down the floor, we have to start inching out to take away the three. And I thought we had some pretty good, exa uh, pretty good examples of both of those tonight. You mentioned mixing in Michael Porter with that second unit in that second half. Both Barton mm -hmm. and Michael Porter Jr. spent some time. How did that help them offensively find some ways to score easier? Yeah, you know, it was um, – I just wanted to keep – you know, the, first, the second quarter, Katie, as you know, uh, we had five bench players in at once, and that just didn't go well tonight. You know, we're not going to abandon that you know, after one game. But in that second half, I just felt it was important. Let me get Will Barton out early and then get him back in with that second unit. Let me get Will out and put Michael in with that unit. And then with that unit, you know, I thought Jeff Green was great tonight. You know, that's what you love about having a stretch five, if you will. You know, they're matching up with JaVale McGee, and he's down the floor, and Jeff is able to knock down some shots. Um, but you can feature Will, you can feature Michael in that second unit a little bit more, and, you know, both of the, those guys stepped up. I mean, Michael Porter, five assists, made some great basketball plays. That was really fun to watch. Will Barton, five assists, no turnovers, hit a couple of uh, clutch shots. So it was, uh, it was, it was it's a hell of a way to start off the season, but, you know, it's one game, 81 left. We have to go go home and find a way to protect our home court uh, on Friday night. Michael, with, with Nicola, like, did what he does, has a good night, and knowing that you are constantly trying to get all your guys better, just what's next for him this year? Because you're not going to let him just rest on that MVP. I mean, where are you going to take this this season? Yeah, I think, you know, the challenges with Nicola are always, uh, for me, they always start with uh, the leadership. You know, early in his career it was kind of growing up, maturing, handling adversity, handling the refs. And he's, he's done that. He's really improved. Uh, and now it's okay. Like, and he was doing it again tonight in the huddles, man. We need to hear your voice. Whether you're in the game or you're not in the game, we need to hear your voice every huddle uh, in the practices, in the locker room. Uh, because he has a tremendous impact and everybody respects his voice and he knows what he's talking about too. I mean, he's not just saying crazy stuff. He's a very, he's got a very high basketball IQ. So that, that starts, that's one. And two, like really committing and owning, um, being the anchor of our defense. You know, is he to Cam David Mutombo? No, he's not. He's not going to be blocking shots, you know, but you know, I've seen guys win defensive player of the year who are not athletic. Marcus Gasol did it. And I think Nicole Jokic has the intelligence the hand-eye coordination uh, and feel for the game where he can be the anchor of our defense. And if he does that and commits to that, Sam, I think that allows us to become 11th in defensive efficiency to maybe a top five defense. 
because that's the kind of impact he can have. Michael, it's always fun to silence a road crowd, particularly in an environment where you guys have, where you guys struggled last year, obviously didn't get a win um, in the playoffs. What, what was the energy like on the bench, particularly particular when Aaron Gordon had that block uh, with 349? Yeah, left? it was, you know, what you love about it is um, because when you start the season, you know, this is not preseason where you're not playing 15 guys. Mm -hmm. You cut your rotation down. Second half, I cut it down even further. You know, but when you see guys that aren't in the game up and cheering, supporting their teammates and just caring about getting the win, that's kind of the embodiment of the culture that we've tried to create and sustain. Being selfless. It's not about the individual. Check your ego at the door. Get over yourself. It's about our group. And to see everybody up supporting guys on big plays like that block that Aaron had or a big three at the end of a shot clock like Will, whatever it is, uh, you know, that, that is what team is all about. And obviously it's easy to do in a win, you know, but we have to have that every single night. And uh, hopefully that can be achieved. You guys, Michael, you've had this sense in your culture and justifiably for a while now that folks are constantly overlooking, right? Now, when you're going into this year, you basically seem like Phoenix was in the finals and everybody has that the narrative of, well, no Jamal, there's a cap on, on what Denver can do. Mm -hmm. Is that part of your, your kind of ethos and your personality still there as a group? <laughs> Just the idea that, that folks are still looking past you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's something that we kind of, we relish that. I mean, it's, that, that seems to be the case. I mean, when's the last time an MVP wasn't playing around Christmas? I don't know. I mean, like it's, uh, there's so many things that if you really, you know, you can get consumed by that. So we don't get consumed by it. We don't sit there and find all the people. You know, if, if people are going to say what they say, they're going to treat us how they treat us. We can't control that. All we can control is to go out there and play our game. We're not going on the court to prove everybody wrong. We're going on the court to try to win. We have goals. We have high goals that we hope to achieve this year. We're not satisfied with the success we've had the last three years. And, and that's what drives us all. It's not to quiet anybody. What drives us is to try to win a championship. And whether that's this year, next year, or the year after, we don't know. But uh, we're not waiting for Jamal Murray to get back. We can't. We love him. We're supporting him. We're going to do everything we can while he's out. But this train keeps going. You know, and uh, we need everybody on board, moving in the right direction. And tonight we had that. And we were able to pull out a great win. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. That'll do it. All right. Thank you. Sorry.